Mr. Canones, thanks for coming. Uh, the book was great. And I think My when pleasure. You, when, you, when you write a book, you're not sure how many will read it, but you're also not sure how much uh, public policy effect will have. But I can see copies around the desk, and I would say half or more of our committee have read your book, probably at least. So it My is mind having is blown. Some, it's having some effect in the public policy, and that's why you're here. Thank you. As I read the book, I was reminded when I was a kid, I used to visit my grandparents in Pittsburgh, and there's a big pool like Dreamland. It's 100 yards long, built around the same time, probably in the 30s, and an amazing pool, 100 yards long with the slides in the center. And so you can see how the community, you know, was uh, surrounding that pool and the activities. Um, as I read through the book and we try to think what can we do better or, or change, uh, the idea that Big Pharma lied and committed fraud is, is, a, is a part of the book and a part of the problem. They were punished, but we need to make sure that people cannot lie and that it is fraud and that it's punished and it is preempted in some way. Some of that could be federal, some of that could be state law. As a physician, uh, I continue to become more and more alarmed that you know our profession was part of the problem. And uh, we've tried to fix it. In Kentucky, we've done a lot of things. We monitor, and you can type into the computer patient's name, find out if they're uh, seeking different doctors, have they gotten opioids somewhere else two days before. Uh, we have gotten rid of the bad doctors, the doctors you mentioned up uh, south of Portsmouth. You know, they're mostly gone. The pill mills are no longer in Kentucky. And yet, uh, we have a county up in the mountains that has 21,000 people. Last year, they had 2.8 million doses of hydrocodone and oxycodone. This is after all the stuff. So all of the stuff, everybody knows it's a problem. Everybody knows more people are dying than are dying from car accidents, that it is a horrible problem. And it was worse last year in this county. They prescribed more. And in fact, since Medicaid expansion, it's an 11% increase. And so when we look at what we do, we say, well, let's have a Marshall plan or let's spend more money. We have to think about how we spend it and what we do because uh, we want more people to have health care, so we expanded Medicaid. If you look at the expansion of Medicaid and you put that map overlying the United States, you have an overlay of the, of, the, of the heroin problem and the opioid problem, and it's related to poverty and the expansion of health care. And so in your book, you talk about, well, you can get three for $3, you can go, you don't have to pay $200 to go to the <coughs> now you pay $3 a month, and you can get it and trade it and all of that that came. So we do have to figure out more rules on this. We have some new rules in Kentucky on acute management, but I think the hard part is the chronic. So if I'm your physician and you've been on it forever for low back pain, how do I get you off of it, and how do I get you right. to keep coming to me, or do you just choose another doctor if I take you off of it? So I, I guess that's the problem, and, and the question is, we all know the knowledge. We, we, we've, people have read your book. People, we know there's a problem out there. We've done some changes, and yet we still have this enormous uh, prescription uh, opioid problem. And so what do you think we do beyond that? I, I agree with the community. More local than federal is probably better, and it's a local response. But we still, you know, how do we fix the medical aspect of this? How do we go a step beyond where we are? Uh well, I mean, there's a lot, uh, that's, a, that's a massive question, and I think there's smarter people than I who might also contribute to, to it. Uh, I, I think one of the reasons that, that you find a kind of a correlation between uh, heroin overdose and Medicaid expansion is because more access to medical, medical care means more access to pills. We still have not changed, really, the basic culture. And one of the reasons for, uh, of doctors to, to prescribe pills as a, as a solution and so it seems to me that, that crucial in all this is that we get back to what we were doing in the 1970s, and that is uh, where insurance companies were, were reimbursing a wide array of, of, of strategies for, for pain. Um, they, are, they have cut back significantly in many areas, I think. Uh, for a long time, I think it was all across the country. Some insurance companies are, are stepping up a little bit more. But to me, it, it, it gets back to what the doctor has available to him or her in the, the appointment, at, the, at the, the point of contact with the, uh, with, with, with the patient. And, you know, to me, that's, that feels like a, a crucial step. Every place I go uh, to speak on this topic, and it, it, I run into doctors who, who tell me that they just don't have much in the way of, of, of other options to right. provide them. And it, I guess the hard part of this is, like, I live in a county where we have 4% unemployment, and the employers come to me and say, we can't find enough workers who Absolutely. are drug-free and have work ethic. There's not enough workers. Then I have counties where 30% of the people don't work, and 30% of the people are disabled, whereas in my county, 4% of the people are disabled. So the problem is we all have big hearts, and people say, well, let's help the disabled, let's help the unemployed, and yet we give them stuff 
but perhaps once you become a non-worker, a permanent non-worker, we get you into this cycle where it's much more difficult to oh, avoid I agree. addiction. I, yeah. And so we have to figure out how to do it with both a heart and a brain where we have work requirements and where you're only temporarily disabled until you're back in the workforce. And so it might involve money, but we do have to be careful about how we do it such that we don't have perverse incentives. Thank you. Thank you, Senator My pleasure. Paul. Mr.